بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Just a clear example for you how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deals equitably with his issue of what he's already ordained. We have an economic crisis going on in this country. Right? They call it a, the great recession. They spend, they're spending months and hours and billions, they're spending millions of dollars to figure out why they lost millions of dollars. And they still haven't come to the conclusion. They still don't know why they lost all that money, man. When as soon as it happened, I already knew. You know what happened? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an that He will destroy riba. He will destroy riba, usury. There were, and not too long ago, about a month ago, there was a econo- uh, an economist on CNN that says what happened in this past two years is that we have lost almost all of the capital interest that we have gained since the depression. Yes, you have, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised that He will destroy this usury. So you can go ahead and build the system back the way you had it, and the same thing is going to happen. This is the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't care how much wealth you think you have, if Allah has already written for it to be this much, that's going to be it. But also, our Rasul sallallahu said, whoever's focus and their mind is on the akhirah, on the hereafter, that means that the, the akhirah is first. And the way you can look at this, and I'm, well, I'll explain in a minute, I'll tell you the way you can look at this. He says, whoever looks at the akhirah first, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make his affairs in order. In order. That person, no matter how much they have to do, they will be at peace in their life, and their affairs will be in order. Have you ever wondered? <clears throat> have you ever looked at a brother? And I'm going to give you a perfect example. Right here in Minnesota. Look at a brother like, uh, like Sheikh Hatim. How much does this, this brother do, man? How much does this brother do? And, but every time I've met him, he's at calm, at ease, and peace. He never seems like he's in a rush. Never seems like he's in a hurry. How many of you ever met him and seen him later, where he'd be frustrated and be like, man, I gotta go, I gotta go. He comes here all the time, helps. He's a medical doctor. He lives, subhanAllah, almost an hour and a half away from here. I couldn't even go to his house for lunch because he lives so far away from here. He had to come here to see me. I know another brother like this, Imam Safi Khan. He was the Imam of a community. What I mean by the Imam was that he was the Imam. He solved every single problem that appeared in the community. He worked from Fajr to late into the night. And he never turned anyone down. And he had time for all of these things, to be the Imam, to be the leader of the school, to deal with Muslims, all the different problems that were going on, to learn his studies, to go travel and speak here and do this and do that, to start an Islamic school, to start an Islamic bank. We look at the scholars of our past, who were not only scholars of deen, but scholars of dunya. They accomplished so many things with so little information that they had, so little access to information. How? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made their affairs in order. Everything they did was done with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessing, with the barakah of Allah. And anything with Allah's barakah is better than everything without it. And also, he said that his affairs will be in order, and Allah will cause the dunya to come after him. Will cause the dunya to come to him. Will cause the dunya to come to you. So when you're chasing the dunya, Ali radiallahu an. And I'll be done in about 10 minutes. Ali radiallahu an said something. He said that when you take one step towards the dunya, towards this world, it takes two steps to get away from you. And death takes two steps to catch up to you. So do the math. Which one is going to catch who first? You taking one step, dunya is taking two to get away from you. Never catch it. And death is taking two behind you. It's going to catch you before you even get close to the dunya. The dunya is getting farther, your death is getting closer. Our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, he drew two lines in the sand, one farther than the other. He said that 
the, the farther line away from him, where he said, this is man's desire. This is his hopes and his dreams and his wishes. But the shorter line is his death. And he will surely run into that line before he ever runs into the other one. This is just the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You want this dunya? Do you want it? Yeah, I want it. We all want to not have to worry about things. Then run away from it. I know that sounds so ludicrous. Run away from it. And I don't mean, I don't mean quit your job and, 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 and uh, uh, don't work and make, think that Allah is going to support you while you go and do khuruj every other weekend and eat dal and all this other stuff and think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just going to just magically send a check in the mail. It doesn't work like that. We still have to work. Allah has commanded the, the, the man to work and be the caretaker of his home. Don't think I'm saying that. But what I mean by run away from it is don't care about it. Don't care about this dunya. Put it in the back burner. And what I mean by put it in the back burner and have the akhirah as your focus, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رُسُولُ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا That indeed in the Messenger of Allah for you is a beautiful example. لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرَةِ وَذَكْرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا For whoever's mind, whoever's vision, their hope is in Allah and the last day. And they remember Allah much. So a Muslim should always, their focus, their vision, their hope should be on the Day of Judgment. And I'm going to talk about that tomorrow, vision. How we need to have a vision going forward in this movement of Islam, this new revitalization of Islamic thought in the Muslims of America and the rest of the world. We'll talk about that tomorrow insha'Allah ta'ala. But what you need to be looking at when you wake up in the morning is Akhirah. Because when we think of Akhirah, most of the time if people tell you Day of Judgment or, or Yawm Al-Akhirah, we think of something long way off. Oh, subhanAllah, man, that's... Whew, day of Judgment, man. Whew, I'm not worried about that right now, man. I got to be at work in like 45 minutes. <laughs> talking about the Day of Judgment. I got to catch the bus, Akhi. Who guaranteed you your Day of Judgment might, doesn't start today? Who guaranteed you that your day of judgment is not going to start tonight? What do I mean by that? I mean that your death come to you. Who's promised you another second in this life? No one. And when death comes to you, that's the beginning of your akhirah. That is your last day. Because that's the time when all of your deeds cease. Except for three, which we know. But that's it. There's no going back and like, yo, hold on a second, give me 10, 10 minutes, let me go pray real quick. When the angel of death comes, he doesn't question anyone. He just takes the soul. So who's going to tell you when your day of judgment is not going to start? So you should always keep that in mind. What am I doing for the day of judgment? How many of you would raise your hand and say you're ready to go in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right now? With what the deeds you have, you're ready to go in front of Allah. That's it, I have enough. I didn't think so. We can never have enough. We should always be thinking, what am I taking before Allah now? Because our Rasul Wasallam said that everyone should take account of themselves before the account is taken for them. They should take account of themselves before the account is taken for them. You should always keep track of your own good deeds. We keep better track of our bank accounts than we do our deeds. Wallahi azim. We keep better track. You, you can tell me probably your last 10 transactions in your bank account, in your balance. I ask you what the last 10 good deeds you did. Um, let me think, Akhi. Give me a second. Yeah, you're pulling on me now. We should constantly be thinking. You're, putting, you're, t- you're thinking more about the money that you've put in a bank, which can't promise you will be there tomorrow. There's no promise you put money in a bank is going to be there tomorrow. When we don't think about the... Bank of the Akhirah. What am I putting there?